are screaming from school where the bands are playing. The softball team in the market packs up and leaves. The people don't stop coming. There's not enough parking in the town to hold this many people, but they are here nonetheless. Ten dollars to get in, someone yells. The screaming continues. The sidewalks don't start or end right. There are cracks in them, but nothing grows. Sometimes there are ants. Ants crawl over the shoes, over socks that swarm black and fuzzy when you kick their heels. The ants in the forest are more red. They swarm too, but they don't. But you don't have to kick the ant hills. You just have to stay still long enough. The mill has a river running next to it. You struggle to take off your shirt and splash into the icy water on a hot summer's day. You don't know what's in there, your friend was warn. Anything could be in there. Fish hooks or broken glass or they bite their lip. Something brushes against your leg. The sign next to the bank says no fishing. Yes, John. Even you. The orchard is alive with people. The trees are ripe with apples. People are sitting in the trees, feet dangling down and faces in by the branches. Dark, sticky, hot juice drips onto your face. And when you look up, there's a gangly teen eating an apple. Dark juice drips down their chin. You walk on. I saw a woman stare at me. She was waiting in a restaurant, alone. I pretended not to notice. I don't know why she was staring so intently. She didn't blink. It was me, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is a neon sign in town for the Lafayette Diner. It is a dentist office now. They've never taken down the sign. Maybe they can't. The thought haunts you all almost as much as the red and blue galo. They name the streets Schuler, Washington, Broadway. They call the baseball diamond Adams and the walking trail Jefferson. It's the closest the town will get to remembering anyone from the outside. You wait for the light to change. There is a Ford pickup from 1966 in the turn lane next to you. You can't see the driver. The light is red. The light has always been red. You know this. Why did you come here? The library sits behind the old one-room school, hidden in the cornfields. The schoolhouse is locked. You can hear its screen door creaking from amongst the bookshelves. I'm going to the restaurant, they say. Nobody asks which one. There is only one. You don't drive on the road by the river after dark. Neither does anyone else. There are deer there. The deer are likely not alone. There is a tiny local museum on the corner of Main Street. It is never open. You have never seen cars in front of it. A girl in your class is the only one you've ever seen enter. Something moves in the brush pile outside at twilight. It's best to ignore it. It's hard to sleep. At night, you hear trains. At night, you hear owls. At night, you hear wind. But the worst nights are the ones when you can't hear anything at all. There are islands in the river. Someone left something there. Nobody comments when the water level rises up to swallow. Ever been inside the gas station once. The intendant knows your name, though you've never met. You pay at the pump after that. You enter the shop with your mom. It's cramped in there and you instantly feel claustrophobic. Why do the shelves seem to be closing in on you? It's only ten minutes and you've already lost your mom. It's like a maze in here. You noticed a ball of thread rolling through each aisle. Something tells you to pay no attention to it. You pass by some mannequins. You take every precaution.
caution to avoid eye contact. You can't shake the feeling that someone's watching you. There's no signal. You tried calling your mom anyway. You ended the call as soon as you heard something ringing from the aisle with the mannequins. Your texts have been stuck at unsent despite mobile data suddenly being accessible again. You try not to overthink it. You finally found to the cure to your habit of touching things as you browse. The leather here feels oddly clammy. You rationalize the red specks underneath your fingernails. Rational thoughts. Rational thoughts. You swear the patterns of clothes keep changing. Every fiber of your being is trying to shake off the psychedelic experience. That aisle certainly was a trip. It's only been 15 minutes. As an introvert, you are always grateful whenever retail workers didn't follow you around. However, you really wished there were signs of human life now. Is the AC getting colder? But then again, it's always colder on your own. Somehow you're on the second floor. You don't remember taking the stairs. In fact, you don't remember that rickety staircase being there. The way fabric is displayed upstairs really caught you off guard. Thin white cloths just effortlessly dangling from the ceiling. You really shouldn't have tried to find the strings that were holding them up. It took you forever to get down that spiral staircase. Wasn't there a more efficient way to store wool? The way it hung from the staircase made it feel as you were walking through a huge spider web. Let's say you were lucky to have even made it out unscathed. Darkness did not welcome you. You made a run for it. How long were you out there? You're sure the store is closed. You try to calm yourself down. They can probably sense your fear. As you approach the cashier, suddenly the shop is bustling with people. When did the lights? You see your mom paying. It's only been 20 minutes. It's only 2 a.m. You feel like you've spent the night here. You don't bother telling your mom anything. You head straight out of the entrance, signaling her that you'll be waiting outside. You and your mom get into the car leisurely as you listen to her drone on and on about the assortment of fabrics she bought and how it was a jackpot. You don't question her dirty fingernails. Red specks. listening to both part one and two, or just part one or just part two if that suits your style. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Blessed Sawa.